In the second paragraph, please remember, up to the time of his death, long before he died, know nothing about the side of his life. He was known to us all as DK. Got it? 那时候重点突出这些表达方式。Now the third paragraph. DK dislikes snobs intensely. Let's say DK dislikes snobs violently, strongly, very much. DK 痛恨势利小人 ，though he owned a large car. He hardly ever used it. That although he possessed a large car, he hardly, he rarely ever used it, preferring always to go on foot. Ing preferring 现在分词做伴随状况状语，更情愿步行。Even when it was raining heavily, he refused to carry umbrella. So I should say, Dick was quite different from us. 那我应该说 Dick 和我们确实不一样。When it is raining, we always carry an umbrella, but he refused to do so. One day, he walked into an expensive shop after having been caught in a particular heavy shower. So you can imagine, see, when he entered a expensive shop, he was wet all over. 同学们可以设想一下这个场景：当他进入这家昂贵商店的时候，他全身上下都湿透了。Why? Because he had been caught in a particular heavy rain. 因为他刚刚遇到了一场瓢泼大雨。遇到瓢泼大雨 ，be caught in a heavy shower。遇到了大雪 ，be caught in a heavy snow。遇到了风暴 ，be caught in a storm。He wanted to buy three hundred pounds watch for his wife. That's the reason why he entered the expensive shop. But he was in such a bedraggled condition, in such a condition, in such a state, 处于一种状态 bedraggled condition, 拖泥带水的状态 Why? Because he had just been caught in a particular heavy rain, such that. 以至于 shop assistant refused to serve him. Why? Don't forget that was expensive shop. So, in the shop assistant opinion, he was not so wealthy as to afford expensive watch. 那么以这位店员的想法，他不可能富有到足以付这款昂贵手表的地步。Why? At that moment, he was in a bedraggled condition. Dicky left the shop without a word. 一句话没说，离开商店 ，and returned carrying a large cloth bag. So maybe he immediately returned carrying a large cloth bag. Carrying 分词做伴随状况状语。Let's say he returned with a large cloth bag. 带着一个大布口袋返回来了。As it was extremely heavy, he dumped it on the counter. As it was quite heavy, 因为相当的重 he dumped it on the counter. 他把它重重的，砰的一声放在柜台上 The shop assistant asked him to leave, but Dicky paid no attention to him. He no attention to him. Let us say, Dicky ignored him. Dicky took no notice of him. Oh, Dicky refused to listen to him. Dicky turned a deaf ear to him. Are you quite clear about my expressions? 同学们，对于我这个示意是否很清楚呢？对什么不加以理睬 ？Refuse to listen to. Pay no attention to. Take no notice of. Turn a deaf ear to. And requested to say the manager, 求见这位总经理 Request, 求见这是非常正式而有礼貌的用词，语气是相当强烈。假如你 request 某件东西的话，你通常有权利得到你想要的。For example, 
I requested the headmaster. 我来求见这位校长。Then every student can request assistance of their teachers. 那么每一位学生都有权利请求老师的帮助。What's the difference between request and demand? 那么它和 demand 有什么不同呢 ？Demand 在语气上还要强烈。假如你 demand 某件物品，你坚决认为你有权得到你要求的东西，并且不愿意接受否定的回答。For example， 我要求我的权利。I demand my right. s Ask， 这是我们最常用的一个常用词了。口头或写信要求得到某物。I ask to get the book. 我要得到这本书籍。Okay, he asked me for help. 他要我帮他。Now let's move back. So we know BK was so angry that he requested the manager. He demanded to see the manager. Got it? Recognizing who the customer was, the manager was the most apologetic. Realizing or recognizing 在这里，现在分词做原因状语。As the manager realized or as the manager recognized who the customer was, 因为这位总经理呢认出了这位顾客是谁。The manager was most apologetic. Most means very much. 所以他感到非常的歉意。And reprimanded the assistant severely. 严厉的斥责了他这位店员。When D.K. was given the watch, he presented shop assistant with the cloth bag. 把某物递给某人 ，hand somebody something or hand something to somebody. 那么比较正式的表达方式 ，present somebody with something. 后表达为 present something to somebody. 他把这个布口袋交给了这位店员。It contained three hundred. Pounds in pennies. 那里面装着三百英镑，便是 OK. So in fact, it contained coins in it. He insisted on the assistant counting the money before he left. How sh- we should use insist is very important. Insist on doing something or insist that. He insisted on. Shop assistant counting the money. Let's say he insisted that the shop assistant should count the money before he left. Answer me. 如果运用 insist that that 从句当中要使用 should 加动词原形的虚拟，这个时候 insist 含义表示坚决要求。Thirty thousand pennies in all. So we know thirty thousand coins in all. In all altogether. 总共有三万枚硬币。On another occasion, 还有一次 ，of course, the writer offers a typical example. 还是在给我们提个比较典型的例子。He invited a number of important critics to see his private collection of modern paintings. 他邀请了许多著名的评论家去观看他私人的收藏绘画作品。This exhibition received a great deal of attention in the press. Receive attention, 引起了注意。那么他的这次展览引起了报界的广泛注意。同请同学们务必背下这个重点的句型结构。Receive a great deal of attention in the press. Why? For though the pictures were supposed to be the work of famous artists. Be supposed to do. 我们刚刚学完的句式结构，因为这些绘画作品名义上是名家的经典之作。They had in fact been painted by D.K. himself. 而这些绘画作品呢，都是 D.K. 本人所做的。It took him four years to stage this elaborate joke. Yeah, I'm sure. It's a really elaborate joke. 这确实是一个精心构思的玩笑。Why it took him four years to do so? 花了他四年的时间这么做。Would you like to spend so long time 
To stage such a joke, 你愿意花这么长的时间来精心策划这个玩笑吗 ？Of course not. Simply to prove. Simply to prove, only to prove. 仅仅来证明 that critics do not always know what they are talking about. 来证明这些评论家们有的时候并不了解他们所谈论的事情。Let's say. He states this joke simply to prove that critics sometimes talk nonsense. 那么，换句话来表明，评论家们所说的都是在胡说八道。Talk nonsense， 胡说八道。其反义短语 talk sense， 说正经话。So critics do not always talk sense. 评论家们并不知道自己在说些什么。Okay, you'd better recite the first paragraph and the wonderful key structures in the second and the third paragraphs. So much for the text.